As many of you know, Donald Trump has been released from Walter Reed Medical Center after undergoing treatment for COVID-19. And after seeing some video clips that we're going to get to here, um, it's evident to me that he is a lot more sick than uh, he's leading on. And these videos are shocking to me. Like you can see him visibly in pain, gasping for air. Um, but before we get to that, I do want to share the tweet that he put out before he was discharged. He said, don't be afraid of COVID. Don't let it dominate your life. I feel better than I did 20 years ago. Yeah, we're going to see that that doesn't really seem to be the case. Um, now, first of all, the main thing that I have to point out is that he is currently contagious and he took off his mask. He should not be taking off his mask ever unless you are in your room that only you and melania share keep that mask on because now everyone who you come in contact with is exposed and needs to self-quarantine and you're not going to be able to contain the outbreak that's currently taking place in the white house if you do things like this so the fact that he's taking off his mask <laughs> i mean he, he he just doesn't get it he doesn't understand it like he's still downplaying the severity of it after he was just released from being in the hospital and he's still not wearing a mask it's it's honestly incredible and another video that i want to share as he's leaving walter reed medical center look at all of the things that like he does like little things that he's probably not even uh aware he's doing he's touching the handlebar we don't know if he coughed into his hand before he put on his mask i mean you're contagious you are contagious so you are putting other people at risk now directly because you have the virus. What are you doing? But I mean, this is Donald Trump. He doesn't care about anybody but himself. Now, I want to play a couple of clips that were astonishing to me. So this one, um, this is a little bit of a snippet. It's eight seconds from a longer clip where it looks like Donald Trump is gasping for air. Like you can see him. He's struggling. Like the way that he's breathing, he's trying to catch his breath. Looks like he's breathing, you know, in a more shallow way because he he doesn't have a choice. This is genuinely like cause for concern. Like when he says he feels better than he did in 20 years, when I see this, I don't I don't believe that at all. Now, this um, video right here. This individual says that it looks as if he's wincing in pain and you can see it. He is like he is struggling. He is suffering right now. He looks he looks like shit like this is this is bad. So all of this talk of I feel better than I did 20 years ago, him being discharged from the hospital. Um, I don't buy it. And I feel like this is part of the facade that he wants to maintain. Like he wants to always be, you know, this alpha male who's untouchable who's like this godlike figure in a way and he's incapable of succumbing to diseases that normal human beings you know catch As, that's all a facade like that fades away when you see him in the wild and he literally is struggling to exist right now wincing in pain now you can argue that maybe i'm looking too much into this and if you said that then i would say that that's probably fair uh when we see those two clips, it looks worse when it's isolated. But as you can see here, he was struggling to catch his breath after he came up the stairs. So maybe it was the case that he's not doing that bad. But just going up that set of stairs is what kind of like made him lose his breath. Um, but over time, you can see throughout this video that he's really struggling and he's trying to play it cool. But even knowing that he's trying to play it cool, the fact that he lets it be known that he's gasping for air or looks like he's gasping for air, it shows you how serious this is. Now, we're going to get to a certain portion of the clip, which is uh, what we already isolated before. But you can see he's talking and whatnot. And right here, you know, he seems... OK, but you can you can just see like in the way that he's acting, his demeanor, he's really trying to play off how horrible he feels. I mean, he probably feels like death. This is a very serious virus. Um, so, you know, he's kind of doing little things here and there, fidgeting with his jacket, probably trying to hide the fact that he's really struggling. Um, this is kind of where we get to that point uh, where we looked at that eight second clip that was shared uh, where he's presumably gasping for air. And then he's posing. So he's he really, really trying to hold it in. I do want to share this. This is Herman Cain's timeline. 
And I mean, Donald Trump is not out of the woods yet, especially when you look at this. So on June 24th, Herman Cain attended Donald Trump's rally, didn't wear a mask. On the 2nd of July, he tested positive for COVID-19. By the 10th, he said he was improving. By the 15th, his doctors, they seemed like he, they said he was improving as well. They seemed happy. Um, on the 27th, said he's really getting better. And on the 30th, he died. Now, I think that this is a little bit of, of an oversimplification because there were reports that Herman Cain was doing really bad. But Herman Cain was trying to downplay how sick he was as well, because currently that's what the Republican Party is trying to do. They're trying to downplay the severity of COVID-19. In fact, there's a GOP senator who uh, said that the fact that Trump is better shows you that it's not as lethal as uh, we previously thought that it was. But I mean, Trump is not out of the woods yet. Like just because he was released from the hospital, probably to the chagrin of his doctors who are caring for him, it doesn't mean that he's better. Um, and when you see him, especially like that portion where he's just gasping for air right there, uh, wincing in pain, he's not out of the woods yet. Now, I do want to share this video. It came out after we got the footage of him presumably gasping for air. And I say presumably because we don't we don't know. I mean, you can only make a sophisticated guess based on what you see. But I mean, uh, keep in mind that this is just me. I'm no medical expert. I'm not a physician. So when I say it looks like Trump is gasping for air, you know, maybe that's just my perception. But, you know, I, I was thinking, OK, maybe he's not as bad. Like maybe this isn't as severe of a case. The fact that they're giving him supplemental ox oxygen, sure, that is um that that tells us that this is something that the doctors are concerned with. But at the same time, if they're allowing him to be discharged or released already, I mean, he's got to be better than uh, we previously thought. But those videos it changed my mind on this. Now, this is what he released. You can tell uh, he looks I just, better here. I just left Walter Reed Medical Center, and it's really something very special. The doctors, the nurses, the first responders. And I learned so much about coronavirus. And one thing that's for certain, don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. And you're going to beat it. I went, I didn't feel so good. And two days ago, I could have left two days ago. Two days ago, I felt great, like better than I have in a long time. I said just recently, better than 20 years ago. Don't let it dominate. Don't let it take over your lives. Don't let that happen. We have the greatest country in the world. We're going back. We're going back to work. We're going to be out front. As your leader, I had to do that. I knew there's danger to it, but I had to do it. I stood out front. I led. Nobody that's a leader would not do what I did. And I know there's a risk, there's a danger, but that's okay. And now I'm better, and maybe I'm immune. I don't know. But don't let it dominate your lives. Get out there. Be careful. We have the best medicines in the world, and it all happened very shortly, and they're all getting approved, and the vaccines are coming momentarily. Thank you very much. And Walter Reed, what a group of people. Thank you very much. So I'm probably reading too much into this, but it kind of felt like he was experiencing shortness of breath as he was talking, but that's probably just me because like when you see something, you know, like his gasping for air, you kind of look for that in everything. So it could just be that like my perception has been skewed because of that video. Uh, but when he says, oh, don't be worried, don't let it dominate your life, you're going to beat it. Like he's assuming that people have access to the best medical care in the world that he got. Like if you are sick with COVID-19, um, that's not necessarily the case. Like I want to show you a tweet that stood out to me uh, from one of my followers. So I responded when Trump downplayed COVID-19 earlier, I said, don't be afraid, folks. If you get infected by COVID, just get a helicopter to escort you to the hospital as a precautionary measure to receive the best health care available in the country, all free of charge. Now, somebody actually responded to that with a quote tweet saying, my mom had to go to three different ERs on four different occasions after testing positive. They didn't accept her until the fourth time when she was literally gasping for air and going unconscious from hypoxia. Yeah, so not everyone is Donald Trump. Not everyone is the president of the United States. Not everyone is going to get access 
to a team of physicians who are working around the clock to make sure that you survive this. So the fact that he is downplaying it after surviving it, it's just, it, it's incredibly irresponsible. And for him to make it seem as if everyone is going to be fine, he's basically implying that you should pretend like it's normal. No, it's not normal. These are not normal times. Not everyone has health care, even if they have health insurance, they might still get a bill. We've seen the stories. But I mean, what's going to happen is you end up going out there, you expose yourself because you see the president, he got COVID-19 and he's fine. So you go and get it yourself because you think if he did it and he's fine, then I, I'll probably be fine too. This is the president, so I trust him. Like these, this is the way that people think. These are his supporters. So for him to do this, it's incredibly irresponsible. But the fact that like he's lying to us about how serious this is. Again, he was going up a flight of stairs, but when you see him gasping for air and presumably wincing in pain while he breathes, which is something that you'd expect from someone diagnosed with COVID-19, it tells us he's trying to hide how ill he really is. And I mean, maybe he would have stayed in the hospital longer if he didn't have such a huge ego, but he doesn't want anyone to think he's ever capable of, you know, getting this sick. He, he's just, he's this macho man and he's always okay. He's always fine no matter what. But I mean, these videos are uncomfortable to watch where he genuinely looks like he is in pain. So, you know, this tells me that he's definitely not out of the woods yet. And um, if he was smart, he would have stayed at the hospital, especially because it's not going to hurt you to do that. Like, you don't have to worry about a bill. You have a huge team of doctors trying to cure you. You have nothing to lose, but his ego is getting in the way of his own health and safety, which is just astonishing to me because even if you're narcissistic, you'd think that you'd at least have this instinct to, you know, at least, I don't know, self-preservation, but his ego overrides everything, including his own physical health. So it's just crazy to me that the president is this sick and, um... He's not only pretending to be normal, but trying to get everyone else to act like everything is normal as well. It's crazy. Tremendous, 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 tremendous